do you see the size of that thing? He's not inside a fence, guys. He's on the outside. Fucking big ass. Hey guys, welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. My name's Thomas. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why I have shithead customers. I always have shithead customers. So once again, if you want to use my life as your entertainment, stay tuned because we're starting right now. All right, guys, how you guys doing today? Me doing great like always, right? We're here beating our chest. We're alive. It's all that matters, right? As I'm sitting back looking at all the videos I've posted, I noticed they're all about shitty customers. And I'm like, man, do I really have that many shitty customers? Like, where's all my good customers at, right? And then I started thinking, why do I have so many shithead customers? Why do I have so many people that are fucking up? Like, is it me? Am I a fuck up? So I attract fuck up customers? And yeah, that is it, a little bit. So first off, look where I'm at. I'm in the south end of Columbus. If you're from Ohio, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're not from Ohio, let's just say it ain't the best place. We're not living rich here, I tell you that. We are a low class, low to medium class. So what that means is when people are calling me, they're not calling me to fix a 2018 BMW. They're calling me to fix their 2004 Grand Am that has 216,000 miles, 13 check engine lights, three tires. The other tire is a kitchen plate. It's held together by duct tape. They want me to come out there and try to get this thing running for 60 bucks. I go out there to do the $60 diagnosis. They hand me $30. They'll give me the other 30 when I'm done. I do the diagnosis and then they hand me 20. So that's how my day starts. Working on that piece of shit car. They only give me half the money, even though they have it. They're going to short me 10 bucks. At that time, you're already pissed off. You're like, fuck it, just give me the money. I'm leaving. So now I've done the diagnosis. They've already got me out of $10. But I've done the diagnosis, whatever it is. It's a, it's a starter. It's going to cost $200 labor, and you buy the part. So when I tell him that, he goes, $200 for a starter? How about $120? Like, so now we're going to go back and forth here. It shouldn't be that. If you go order pizza, and you go into Domino's, and they tell you it's $15 for a pizza, you're like, uh, how about eight? No, you pay the fucking money. If they say 15, you give them 15. If I tell you 200, you give me 200. This isn't a contract negotiation. This is the price, the labor, $90 an hour. It's gonna take four hours or whatever it is. That's how we come up with the price. It's that simple. So now I finally got him agreed to 200. And I'm like, okay, sir. So you're gonna pay 100 up front. Then once we're done with the vehicle, you pay the other hundred and the whoa, whoa, whoa. I ain't giving you no money up front. I've never gave any money till the job's complete. I'm like, oh, how many times have you worked with mobile mechanics? Well, this is my first time. Well, then how the fuck do you know what you're supposed to do? They're like, oh, I've never paid any money up front. I don't do that at the dealership. Well, am I a dealership? Am I a Riker used cars? No. So this is what you get. You get me standing there saying, you gotta give me half the money. Because at the shop, if you don't pay, you don't have to pay till it's over. But if you don't pay, you don't get the vehicle back. I don't have that option. If you don't pay me, I'm just standing there with my thumb up my ass. And I call the cops, they don't do anything. They say, take it to court. Okay, well I take you to court. You don't show up. And they're like, okay, the judgment in favor for you, Mr. Mays, they owe you $2,000. Well, guess what? I'm not getting $2,000 because you don't work, your own food stamps, or your social security checks $500. Your house is being paid on a section eight voucher. There is no money to get. So I never get the money. So at least if I get half up front and you stiff me and run away, boy, at least I got something for it. Now I've explained why he has to give me the $100 up front. So I got the $100 now, he gives it to me. He's looking at me real shady, threatening me. You better not rip me off or I'm gonna come find you. And I'm like, yes, I know. You'll shoot me, you'll beat me up or whatever. I get it, brother, just give me the money. Nobody's gonna rip you off for this $100. We're gonna fix the vehicle. And I'm like, okay, sir, you need to go get the starter. He's like, okay, man, I got you. I'm like, call me when you're done. We can meet back up. He's like, okay. So then I don't hear from you that day. I'm like, okay, what's going on? I've messaged you a few times. You haven't said anything. I'm like, eh, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I have other jobs. So the next morning I get a phone call at 6 a.m. and it's you, and it's you telling me, I got my starter, man. Can you come over now? No, I can't come over at 6 a.m. There's other job schedule now because you didn't answer the text messages and calls. So I can be there at three o'clock after I do these other jobs. 
and now you're mad. Now you're throwing a fit. Wait a minute. I gave you half the money up front. You're supposed to be able to come when I tell you to. No, no, no. Just because you gave me the money up front, you still have to answer the emails or the calls or the texts. I'm waiting on you to get the part. So if you haven't got the part yet, you pick up the phone and say, oh, I don't have the part yet, but I'm picking it up tomorrow at 9 a.m. And at that time, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to schedule you for 9.30 then. Sound good? Oh, sounds perfect. That's how easy it is. But you didn't answer, so I scheduled somebody else. Now you're mad and you want me to come at 6.30 in the morning. I tell you no, and you're pissed off, and you're threatening me again. Because a lot of these people like to threaten for some reason. Even though he has no idea who he's fucking with right now. And I used to be a straight killer. I don't know what I am anymore. I got maybe one fight left in me. And I don't want to waste it on you. I'm saving it for the person that breaks in my house. But that's what they'll do. They'll sit there and fucking yell, bitch, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, sir, I'll see you at three. So I do my other jobs. And why I'm doing the other jobs, you've already called and texted me 10 different times, asking if I'm on my way. Even though I told you it'd be 3 o'clock 10 different times. So, I finally get there. It's 3 p.m. You come outside, and with the starter, it wasn't a new starter. It's a used starter that we don't even know if it works or not, or how much life is left. You bought this used starter for $15 at the local junkyard, just risking it. We have no idea if it works. And you say... So you guarantee your work? Do I get a warranty? So yes, you think I'm going to give you a warranty on this part? No. I'll give you a guarantee on my work. Sure, I know that I'm going to be doing the job right. I can't guarantee you this part. So I finally shoo you away so I can start doing my job. Get the car jacked up, and right as I'm starting to work, guess what? You're right there beside me. And I'm like, what's up, brother? What can I help you with? Oh, no, nah, man, I just like to watch. I like to learn. You know, maybe I might want to start working on my own car. I'm like... Are you serious, man? Just let me do my job. I mean, sometimes it's okay, but listen, I would rather you not be out there right beside me because now you're asking questions. And even if you don't ask questions, you're distracting me. All I'm thinking about is you right there beside me. Like, leave me alone. Like when the surgeon is working on your heart, you don't want the family coming in there and sitting there watching, asking the doctor, are you doing this right? Like the doctor, I'm sure knows how to do it. You just leave him be. Well, guess what? Same thing with me. You go inside and you stay warm. You're paying me to stay out here in this cold weather, right? So let me just stay out here and be cold, do the job, and get done with it. And I try to give you subtle hints. I'm like, hey, brother, just go inside, man. It's cold out here. You know, I got this. And it doesn't work. So then I have to be like, brother, man, just go inside. Let me do this, man. You're distracting me. I said, if not, I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you, bullshit, and I need to get this work done. So I'm still just trying to be in a joking manner, trying to remain halfway professional in this unprofessional setting that I'm in. Then I finally got to tell you, brother, just go inside, man. Let me just do my job. And then sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. But no matter what, I still have to get back to work. So now I'm working. If you went inside, you come back out about 20 minutes later. Hey, man, how's everything going? You about done? Like, no, nah, brother, I got about two more hours. Two more hours, really? It takes that long to do a starter? I'm like, well, on this vehicle, yes. Not every starter is the same. For some reason, certain customers think every starter is the same on every vehicle. I watched the YouTube video, and the video was only like 20 minutes long. It wasn't the right video you watched. You should have subscribed to Simplify Mechanic, and you should too right now, right there in the corner. I mean, that's pretty good, right? You got to admit that one's good. So he should have subscribed to Simplify Mechanic because it would show you it's only 20 minutes long, but I'm going to break it down and tell you the actual job takes about two hours. Yes, the video is eight minutes long. You're right, but the job is not, brother. First of all, it's not even the right vehicle. That was a 1964 Camaro. You got a 2003 Grand Am with a dinner plate as a rim. So now I finally got it finished, right? I have you come outside. We go to start the vehicle and it doesn't start. And you're looking at me like, what are you doing, man? Why ain't it starting? Like, brother, I told you, I'm not sure if this starter works. You just bring me this used starter. Now, sometimes it will start. And if it does, it'll work for a couple days, maybe a week, and then it won't start anymore. And guess what? You're going to call me back like I did something wrong. When it was you that bought the starter off a 35-year-old car that's sitting in a junkyard for 15 bucks. But no, that couldn't be it. It has to be something I did wrong. That's why you should do it the right way the first time. You can buy used parts for certain things, but a starter and an alternator, these are very important parts to your vehicle to keep them running. I just don't want to gamble with that. But you did, 
and you lost. But no, it's my fault. So now you want a refund. I'm not gonna give you the refund. No, you can kiss my ass. I did the job. I put the part that you gave me. The diagnosis is correct. You just got a shitty part. You ain't getting the money back. Sorry. Then you're gonna go leave me a bad review, which is fine, whatever. And you'll tell everybody I ripped you off and I'm a scammer and this and that. And the truth is, you as a fucking cheapskate didn't buy the part new. But for some miracle, it does start and it does run. You're gonna call me and say my rear tire is making a really bad noise, man. And it wasn't doing that before you worked on my starter. You must have done something wrong. I'm like, yes, sir. That's exactly what happened. We fixed the starter, but when you turned around, I went back of the car. I jacked it up. I took a hammer and I beat the wheel bearing to death, but I didn't beat it too hard. I did it. So in five or six days, it would go bad. Not right then. I mean, I timed it perfect. Seven days on the dot. That's when it started wobbling. It's pretty good, right? You're an idiot, man. You know what all this is called? It's called a Wednesday. My situation that I've been talking about where I'm going through some things and I've been really struggling and things like that. And one of the big things that's causing the stress is we don't have a work vehicle at the moment. We have engine problems and it's going to cost a lot of money to fix our work vehicle and it's not worth it. So we need to get a new work vehicle and it's stressing me out. But as I'm sitting there thinking, well, at least I don't have to deal with this shit anymore. I mean, I'm not making any money. I'm struggling, broke, poor, whatever. But I'm not as stressed dealing with this asshole. So I'm like, is it even worth it? Like, I started being a mechanic because it helped with my PTSD. But recently, it's just made it worse. So I don't even know if I should keep doing it. I know this video, like, I'm all over the place. But you guys are my therapist. I turn this on and I bitch and vent to you. And you guys in the comments bitch and vent about your life to me. So we got a good little back and forth here about our shitty lives. And as I'm sitting here thinking of everything, I'm thinking, these motherfuckers, dude, just what pieces of shit they are. I deal with these people every single day. Well, it's my fault. It's my fault for having my prices so low. It's my fault for taking the jobs on the 2002, 2004 Pontiac Grand Am starter with 27 different other things. It's my fault for letting him get the used part. I should have said, no, I, I do not replace used parts. You have to buy it new. And if he doesn't do that, I should walk away from the job. I should raise my prices so it weeds out these scumbags, these people that try to rip you off or not pay you. So a lot of this is my fault. It's my fault because I'm catering to people in the lower and middle class. Like everybody needs their vehicle fixed. And it doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, whatever. Poor is poor, right? Poor doesn't see a collar. Just do my job. But now I'm learning the poorer the customer, the more bullshit they put you through. So I don't even know if being a mobile mechanic's worth it anymore. But if I do get a new work vehicle, which we're working on, we're trying to get some money together, we're selling some things, we're gonna figure it out at some point. Fucking 300 pound pit bull. Now look, look what See, happened. this is what happens in my life. So a giant pit bull comes in here, he's trying to kill me. What a fucking day, look at his big ass, right? Standing at the end, look at him. Did you see the size of that thing? And that thing was huge. Oh, there he is right there, look. He's big ass. He's not inside a fence, guys. He's on the outside. Get out of here! Go! This fucking big ass. Where I live, a 200-pound pit bull will walk up on you. So see? It ain't just customers ripping me off. Now I'm trying to get attacked by pit bulls. But when your life goes to hell, it goes to hell quick, right? You got mobile mechanic lawsuits. You're fighting for custody of your son. Your mobile mechanic work vehicle breaks down. Everything's going to shit. You're stressed out. And then to top it off, neighbor's pit bull tries to come and kill you all i know is i gotta hurry up and get out of here before the pit bull comes back before it kills me i need to tell you guys look in the video description i has my cash app and my venmo anything like that if i have any rich subscribers that don't want to help me get a mobile mechanic work van please donate i know one of you subscribers are worth a lot of money come bless your boy because if not we're gonna be making stakes in our next videos and not be working on vehicles. But if you like this giant pit bull that about attacked me, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. But either way, like we always say, simplify till next time.